Welcome back. Well, now what we're going to talk about is how to flow test an intake manifold. Previously, we flow tested everything with a three-quarter inch radius flow guide directly mounted to the cylinder head. I call that gross intake airflow, kind of like your gross pay and your net pay. Uh, everything on the intake side that you're going to bolt on, the intake manifold, the carburetor, and so on, is going to decrease your gross airflow, just like taxes decreases your gross pay. So this is how we flow test the intake manifold, at least how we do it. We would flow test the cylinder head first. We'd flow test all four ports, sometimes just that max lift or at 500 lift and get your numbers. And then we're going to put an intake manifold gasket on the cylinder head and we're going to bolt an intake manifold to it. Now, now when, when you go ahead and you flow test an intake manifold, you're basically doing a comparison of one intake manifold to the next. You can do intake manifold development on a flow bench, although it's very difficult to do. Um, you can make changes in this particular intake manifold. This is a Vortec bowtie head and this is an Edelbrock 2814 intake manifold. So once you get your baseline, you can go in here and start to change things and radius things. You're very rarely going to see any type of a change in airflow. Intake manifolds can be developed somewhat on a flow bench, although most of the time it's on a much higher capacity flow bench that more mimics what type of conditions you're seeing on the race track, and it should be combined with the dyno. Okay? So we're going to bolt the intake manifold on, and then what you want to do is you want to go ahead and block off the other side. Now, you can do this a couple of different ways. You can go ahead and, and, just, and just put some, some duct tape on there, or you can go ahead and make a plate like we do here that will bolt on and that will positively block off the other side. So now you're ready. To flow test this intake manifold on this head and flow test this intake port. Now, normally what I would also do here is you could have a carburetor on there and you have your net net airflow. This is what it's going to flow. You could go one step further and put an air cleaner on here with a filter. Then you really know what you're actually getting at the valve. Okay. Uh, what I would do here if it was a smaller intake manifold that had more airspeed, I would build a spacer on here that had a radius. Okay, I can show you what we use for two barrel intakes in the next video. But this will give you a good idea how this intake manifold flows on this cylinder head. Now if you want to go ahead and if you want to flow test another intake manifold to compare it, let's say you want to put a Edelbrock uh, uh, 2925 on here, which is a Super Victor. That intake manifold will also Bolt on to the Vortec Bowtie head. It works really, really well. You can go ahead and do a back-to-back -back comparison. And then when you go to the dyno and you see the difference in the, in the performance numbers, you have the airflow numbers to quantify that difference. Now, going to the other extreme, this is a no plane intake manifold. This is actually an RPM performer intake manifold that we may look like a 2101 intake. So this is one of those, what do they call them, cheater intake manifolds. This intake manifold will also bolt up to this particular cylinder head, just like so. So what this will tell you is what's the difference between airflow wise between a dual plane intake manifold and a single plane intake manifold. So if this cylinder had flow 260 CFM max of let's say 600 left, you bolt that 20, uh, 2814 on and just the intake manifold low carburetor, it may dock it down to 245 or 250. You bolt this one down, it may knock it down another 20 or 30 CFM. Now that's neither good or bad, it just is what it is. This intake manifold is designed for a little bit lower RPM. Uh, torque application where the aluminum intake is designed for just, just a different type of an RPM application. Okay? So that's how you would flow test 
uh, an intake manifold. Always make sure you have all the intake valves in. If you're even going to do one cylinder, you don't want it sucking back through the cylinder through the intake manifold and affecting your flow numbers. And you want to make sure you block off this side. You can do that with duct tape. So all you're drawing from is that one cylinder. Of course, you would plug this vacuum port here also. So, the next video will show you a special fixture we made some time ago to flow test just intake manifolds. Uh, until then, um, post your comments and questions below and we'll see you uh, in the next segment.